Hello, my name is Rudy Nunez. I am a PharmD candidate, class of 2024, and this is my drug information presentation on Vibrid, otherwise known generically as Velazodone. So Vibrid falls into the pharmacological category of antidepressant. It is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, otherwise known as an SSRI, but it also does have effect on its serotonin subtype the 5-HT1A receptor as a partial agonist. It has an FDA approval of January 21st, 2011, and is available in 10, 20, 40 milligram tablets. It's pharmacokinetics in terms of ADME processes. For absorption, it is 72% bioavailable with food. So with this medication, we're definitely gonna counsel to take it with food uh, it does, food does increase the area under the curve by 50%. Distribution, it, it is widely distributed, 96 to 99% protein bound. Metabolism, it, it does have extensive hepatic metabolism, mainly through the CYP3A4 processes, but also the C, the 2C19 and the 2D6 as minor pathways. In terms of, of elimination, it, it is eliminated by urine by 1% unchanged, feces 2% as unchanged drug. Its onset of action uh, in terms of depression, its initial effects may take, uh, may be observed within one to two weeks of treatment with continued improvement through four to six weeks. So we definitely counsel that it, it is gonna take a few weeks before you start reaping some of the benefits of taking this medication. Its half-life is about 25 hours, and time to peak serum is four to five hours. Vibrid is thought to work in two ways. It can inhibit CNS neuron serotonin reuptake, and thus increasing serotonin availability to the postsynaptic cleft, but it could also bind, and denoted here, it can bind with high affinity to the 5-HT1 receptors and thus increasing serotonin function. Both of these are thought to drive a faster antidepressive effect. In the images depicted here, we do see that the 5-HT1A receptors are found both presynaptically and postsynaptically, and they are being bound either by serotonin or by vibrid, uh, serotonin vibrid denoted in yellow or green, uh, respectively. And then we also have the CERT transporter, which is the the transporter that drives a reuptake of serotonin, it is found presynaptically in purple, and it, it is the vibrate is binding to these receptors as well, thus inhibiting the reuptake of serotonin. So as mentioned before, vibrate is available in tablet form in 10, 20, and 40 milligram tablets. Uh, it is indicated for major depressive disorder, unit polar, so not bipolar, and it's gonna be titrated to response and tolerability. Its initial dosing is gonna be 10 milligrams once daily for seven days. Then it's gonna be increased to 20 milligrams once daily. This is the first therapeutic dose. If needed, we can increase even further after seven or more days to a maximum of 40 milligrams per day. We're gonna take this medication with food with food, again, increases its bioavailability and the area under the curve, and it does have no renal or hepatic adjustments. Um, discontinuation therapy, again, because it has a half-life of 25 hours, we, we could titrate it a little bit slower, but starting, if the patient was already on the 40 milligrams, we're gonna reduce the dose to 20 milligrams daily for four days, and then 10 milligrams daily for three days. If the patient was on 20 milligrams and then we decided to discontinue, we're gonna reduce the dose to 10 milligrams and discontinue after seven days. Some of the warnings and precautions while a patient is using a brazidone is that it does have a US box warning for suicidal thoughts and behaviors. We're gonna counsel patients and patient family members to closely monitor all antidepressant treated patients for clinical worsening and for emergence of suicidal thoughts and behaviors. Vibrazidone is not approved for use in pediatric patients 
safety and efficacy has not been established in patients younger than 18 years of age. Um, uh, some of the contraindications include concurrent use with MAO inhibitors and of course any patient who has a hypersensitivity to vibrazidone or any of its ingredients should not be taking this medication. Vibrazidone can be confused and these are look-alike, sound-alike drugs with iliperidone, lorazidone, paliperidone, risperidone, or zoprazidone. So extra uh, careful not to confuse those medications. And now in this slide, we get into some of the adverse reactions for Vibrid. In the illustrations here, we see tiredness, headache, restlessness, dizziness, sweating, gas, heartburn, and dry eyes are some of the common side effects. In the next column, it's going to break it down based on commonality percentages. So in uh, about 10% or more, these are known as common side effects, patient will experience diarrhea, nausea, or headaches. In the less common, 1-10% to of patients may experience palpitations, dizziness, insomnia, fatigue, drowsiness, restlessness, migraine, sedation, serxomia, sexual dysfunction, or vomiting. And the rare but more serious side effects, this typically happens in less than 1% of patients, hyponatremia, serotonin syndrome, and suicidal ideation. When treating a patient with any type of antidepressant, we have to ensure that the monitoring parameters are set in place. So with Vibrid, we have to make sure that we monitor patients periodically, especially in the beginning of therapy or when doses are increased or decreased. We're gonna monitor signs of symptom resolution, mental status for depression, uh, suicidal ideation or anxiety, social functioning, mania, panic attacks, signs and symptoms of serotonin syndrome or akathisia, which is a movement disorder. Efficacy monitoring, of course, include a reduction of symptoms of depression, and clinically we can use uh, screening toolkits, the PHQ-9, for example, or at home we'll probably use uh, more like counseling on the patient's mood and affect. Uh, toxicity monitoring includes signs and symptoms of withdrawal upon abrupt dose reduction or discontinuation. In this slide, we bring forth some of the drug-drug interactions that can be seen in a patient who has taken Vibrid. Uh, and again, remembering that Vibrid is a CYP3A4 substrate. If we have an inducer, we will likely see an induction in its metabolism, thus reduction in its uh, drug levels and effectiveness. The clinical management will include monitoring and considering dose increase of velazidone. With CYP3A4 inhibitors, we will likely see an inhibition of its metabolism and thus increasing the risk of velazidone toxicity, increasing its drug level and the clinical management will include monitoring and closely uh, considered dose decrease of velorazidone. With drugs such as tryptans, SSRIs, dextroamphetamines, or tramadol, we'll likely see an increased risk of serotonin syndrome, and then we're gonna monitor closely for signs and symptoms of serotonin syndrome, which can include restlessness, hyperthermia, hyperreflexia, and incoordination. With drugs such as MAO inhibitors, we are going to increase the risk of serotonin syndrome, but in this case, it's actually contraindicated. So concurrent therapies are not recommended and contraindicated, so we should allow up to 14 days to elapse between the therapies before we can initiate uh, one or the other. And finally, in this slide, I would like to bring forth some of the clinical pearls that are gonna be your take home messages from this presentation on Vibrid. It is used for the treatment of major depressive disorders in adults. Safety and efficacy has not been established in pediatric patients and in patients younger than the age of 18 years old. We're gonna take this medication with food and we're gonna avoid alcohol while taking this medication. We're gonna assess mental status for worsening signs and symptoms of depression. Again, there's a boxed warning for signs and symptoms of depression. And Vibrid having a dual mechanism of action 
can be thought to increase its antidepressive effect on its patients and so it, it does eliminate the the need to add an adjunct therapy hopefully and and so it, it is uh, a re relatively good treatment option for our patients with major depressive disorder and before I leave I wanted to list some of the clinical practice guidelines for depression uh, depression is a very complicated condition and will require a very thoughtful and thorough therapeutics process. This is not an all-inclusive list, but these are some of the guidelines that I look through to review for this presentation. The first one is on the American College of Physicians, and it was last published in 2023. Then uh, we have the American Psychological Association in 2010, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, of 2022 and the World Federation Societies of Biological Psychiatry and here I listed part one there's also a, a second part to to this series um, and here is a list of my resources that I use for the presentation uh, again thank you for your time and attention in this presentation